Das ist ein ganz interessantes Spannungsfeld, in dem ich mich da bewege. Ursprünglich I originally studied mathematics and did my PhD, and I was then fortunate enough to get involved in applications, in real problems. And I found this extremely exciting. You often discover mathematical problems here too, which are interesting in their own right. And vice versa, I was fascinated by the fact that you can use the mathematics we do, particularly mathematical optimization, to find solutions to real problems and often do things better than they were done before. What I find especially fantastic is that many practice-related problems, when you boil them down to their mathematical structure, are rather similar, although the areas of application may be very different, telecommunications, traffic or even mathematical puzzles. But that's the great thing about mathematics, that you have the abstract framework and can then think in these structures. Andreas Schulz is a world leader in the fields of mathematical optimization and computational economics. For 17 years he was professor of operations research at MIT in Cambridge. In 2015, the mathematician moved to TU München, where he is setting up an interdisciplinary research center between economics and mathematics. Schulz investigates the principles of discrete optimization. This involves designing and analyzing mathematical algorithms to determine the best possible solutions to optimization problems, which often have a huge number of potential solutions. Schultz likes to demonstrate this using a Chinese checkers board. How many diamonds composed of four marbles can be placed on the board without overlapping? It's really easy to describe. Everyone can sit straight down and try to solve it, and you do find a solution. But the question is, is it the best possible solution? And this is where mathematics kicks in. You have to look and see how you can model it, and how you can prove that it can't actually be done better. So this simple example, that's really just a mathematical puzzle that people have solved for fun, can be used as a door opener to combinatorial or integer optimization. From the game to the implementation of mathematical optimization. As in nearly all sectors of business, inventory is a major concern in beverage logistics. If you want to know the best time to place an order for individual goods, depending on holding costs and ordering costs, the economic order quantity formula gives the optimal solution. But even for just two different goods, when replenishing jointly may result in savings, it is not possible to compute the optimal ordering points efficiently. While searching for a solution, Schultz hit on a connection to another mathematical problem, decomposing large integers into their factors. If we look at this concrete problem of the two products, if we were able to find the best time to place the order, or equivalently, the best order quantity, and do it rather quickly using what's technically called a polynomial time algorithm, then we would also have such an algorithm for factorizing integers. However, it's common belief that this is difficult. It's not for nothing that factorizing integers is the basis of encryption methods, like the ones used in online banking or to encrypt emails. Without operations research, today's global economy is almost unthinkable, whether for optimizing the exchange of goods or for effectively operating air traffic. At the TUM School of Management, Schulz discusses a sequencing problem. The goal is to find the best sequence for processing a certain number of tasks. To incorporate practical requirements most effectively, Schulz suggests introducing a non-linear, objective function of job completion times. The really good projects are the ones that make you rethink things, where you're confronted with new problems, where you have to ask yourself whether the methods you know are appropriate or whether you need to adapt them. Where's the complexity in the problem? These are the fun questions. And when the solution that emerges is mathematically pleasing as well and really works, that is the icing on the cake. The problem of sequencing also occurs in hospitals. An important example is appointment scheduling, and one of the challenges is to keep waiting times for patients requiring x-rays or other medical procedures to a minimum, whilst ensuring that the expensive equipment is not idle. 
Accounting for the stochasticity in the duration of such procedures, Professor Schultz has found an appealing method of computing robust solutions. In the healthcare sector, good solutions are often the ones that are communicable and viable, that can be used in everyday practice, that you can quickly calculate in the morning if necessary, and that you can perhaps demonstrate to staff graphically. And that's what we've managed, or at least started to do, with appointment scheduling, so that we can achieve a reasonable trade-off between minimizing waiting times and minimizing costs. Andreas Schulz sees much greater potential for mathematical optimization in the humanitarian field. The distribution of aid, such as here in southern Sudan by the German charity Welthungerhilfe, is always a major logistical challenge. Professor Schulz is convinced that mathematical optimization, paired with local support, can do a great deal to help. For me, it's an extremely attractive proposition, just the thought that one can help someone in this way with the means and methods at our disposal. And I find it personally much, much more satisfying than lowering costs or maximizing profit. I think it's a really special thing to do. It's simply something very close to my heart.